What a do, skibbity boo, it's your boy Shawnee B Gaming. Today we're going to be going over the 8.7 mid-season patch notes. We have a new battle pass, a new event, and a lot of changes. First, we're going to be going over the items, then the gods. We're going to be going over the post-PTS update. We're going to be going over the new skins coming out. And finally, we're going to be going over the map changes. If you are new to the channel, I upload a lot of Smite videos on the channel. There's a little something there for everyone. If you could, help a brother out and subscribe to the channel. Let's go ahead and jump right into the video. First up, we have item changes, starting with Meditation Cloak. Meditation Cloak is going to be receiving a rework. Enter a meditative state where nearby ally gods within 50 units are restored for 8 plus 5% of their missing health and mana each tick. The heal is going to occur every second for 4 seconds. The cooldown is going to be 160 seconds. Meditation Cloak Upgrade Rework. Enter a meditative state where nearby allied gods within 50 units restore 8 plus 5% of their missing health and mana each pulse. Additionally, each pulse reduces cooldowns for all abilities by 0.5 seconds. The pulse occurs once every 4 seconds. I think this is a good change. I think Meditation was probably one of the worst relics in the game. So it'll be interesting to see where it falls with these changes. Sundering Spear. It's a rework. Fire a bolt that travels 7 units, stopping at the first god hit, dealing 10% of their current health as true damage and reducing any active shields by 50%. Targets hit take 10% increased damage for 5 seconds. This can stack 2 times. The relic has 2 charges. The cooldown is 90 seconds. Sundering Spear Upgrade Using this item fires a bolt that travels 70 units, stopping at the first god hit, dealing 15% of their current health as true damage and reducing any active shields by 75%. The target takes 10% increased damage for 5 seconds, stacking 2 times, and this relic has 2 charges. Bracer of Undoing. This relic has been removed from the game. They are introducing a new relic, Bracer of Radiance. Place a Radiant Glow at a target location for 90 seconds. Allies who move through this field gain 10% increased power if above half health, or 10% movement speed if they're below half health for 8 seconds. This fragment acts as a ward. If destroyed, the cooldown of the relic is reduced by 20 seconds. It has a cooldown of 100 seconds. Bracer of Radiance Upgrade. The upgraded version is going to be the same as the base, except for this Radiant Glow acts as a Sentry Ward. Boots are being removed from the game. Players in all modes now received 18% movement speed over their first 7 levels. Elixir of Speed has been removed from the game. This is something you would pick up to sell your boots, gain the movement speed that the boots provided. But since you're going to be gaining that movement speed over the first 7 levels, they're just going to remove it. Enchanted Spear, decrease magical penetration from 10 to 5, increase magical power from 30 to 40. Heavy Mace, decrease the physical penetration from 10 to 5, decrease the cost from 1500 to 1450. Brawler's Beatstick, Jotun's Wrath, and the Crusher should have their total costs unchanged. Ikival, decrease attack speed reduction from 10% to 7% per stack, increase the physical power from 30 to 35. Mystical Mail, Change passive damage from 40 to 30 plus 1 per level, so at level 20 it's actually going to be 50. Winged Blade, decrease the cooldown reduction from 20% to 10%. Staff of Mirden is receiving a rework. Decrease the magical power from 110 to 95. It's new passive. When your ultimate ability has finished casting, you're going to gain Mirden's Brilliance, which provides 80% uncapped cooldown reduction, which will decay to 40% uncapped cooldown reduction over 7 seconds. Uncapped cooldown reduction overrides normal cooldown reduction. At the end of the 7 seconds, you're going to lose Mirrodin's Brilliance, which can only occur once every 45 seconds. War Flag Rework War Flag's new passive, getting an assist when an enemy dies provides a stack with 1% movement speed and 2% attack speed for 8 seconds to nearby allied gods, up to 10 stacks. While at or above 4 stacks, each time you damage an enemy god, you're going to restore 15 health and mana to nearby allies within 55 units, and you're also going to gain 8 gold. War Banner, which is the upgraded version of War Flag. Getting an assist for an enemy dying provides a stack that provides 2% movement speed and 4% attack speed for 8 seconds to nearby allies up to 10 stacks. While at or above 4 stacks, each time you damage an enemy god, you are going to restore 1.25% health and 1.25% mana to nearby allies within 55 units and refresh the duration of these stacks. Corrupted Bluestone is receiving a rework. Decrease the physical power from 60 to 50. It's now going to provide 150 health will now provide its stacking benefit for applying corruption rather than actively tracking how many applications of corruption are active. This stacking benefit will last for 6 seconds. 
Decrease the attack speed provided per stack from 15% to 10%. Stacks now provide 4% increased protections. Death's Toll. Increase the heal on melee cleave basic attacks from 50% to 75%. Range cleave basic attacks remain the same at 50%. Death's Embrace. Pretty much the same change. Increase the heal on melee cleave basic attacks from 50% to 75%. Range cleave basic attack hits remain at 50%. Berserker's Shield. This item can only be built on Assassins and Warriors. Increase the attack speed from 15% to 25%. Increase the physical protections from 20 to 30. I think this is probably a good change, even though I don't like it up front. I think limiting it to Assassins and Warriors is going to be helpful for balancing it. It just feels weird that everything else on that tree is going to be able to be built by Hunters except for this item. Shogun's Kasari. No longer provides crowd control reduction. Now provides 150 health. Increase the attack speed aura from 25% to 30%. Serrated Edge. Increase the physical power from 25 to 35. Manic Conceptor. Increase the burn damage from 12 over 2 seconds to 16 plus 5% of your physical and magical power over 2 seconds. Decrease the amount of stacks from 4 to 3. Increase the health restore from 15 to 3% of your maximum health. And increase the mana restore from 15 to 5% of your maximum health. And increase the mana restore from 15 mana to 5% of your maximum mana. So I think this is going to be a really strong change. Landing 1 basic attacks and restore 3% of your maximum health. That sounds kind of nutty. Mannequin Mace, the upgraded version. Increase the health restore from 2.5% to 3% of your maximum health. And for the mana restore, increase it from 2.5% to 5%. Sentinel's Gifts, decrease the cost from 600 to 550. Increase both magical and physical protections from 7 to 10. Conduit Gem is now going to provide 100 mana. Vampiric Shroud, increase the health from 75 to 100. Increase the physical protections from 10 to 15. Blood Soaked Shroud, increase the physical protections from 40 to 55. Increase the health restore from 12 to 2% of maximum health. Increase the mana restore from 6 to 2% of maximum health. Remove the bonus stacking lifesteal from this item's passive. Sacrificial Shroud, increase the magical power from 110 to 115. Warrior's Axe, increase the passive bonus damage and health seal from 30 to 35 plus 1 per level. So it's going to be 55 at level 20. Atalanta's Bow, increase the power from 35 to 40. Leather Cow, now provides 7 MP5. Hunter's Cow, now provides 15 MP5. Warding Sigil, decrease cost from 700 to 600. Tainted Steel, Decrease your healing reduction from 20% to 15%. You are now healed for 100% of the healing reduced. Tainted Amulet. Increase healing reduction from 20% to 30%. Tainted Breastplate. Increase the physical power from 40 to 50. Increase the magical power from 60 to 75. Jade Emperor's Crown. Increase health from 150 to 200. Tyrannical Plate Helm. Decrease the cost from 2600 to 2400. Up next, we're going to be going over the God Changes. First up, we have Amaterasu, Heavenly Reflection, increase the charge rate from taking damage from 4 to 4.5, increase the charge gain from hitting an enemy from 0.15 to 0.2. This means Amaterasu will gain charge on Heavenly Reflection more quickly for taking damage and for each enemy she hits. Dazzling Offensive, increase the base damage it was on a scale of 80 to 240, now it's going to be on a scale of 80 to 260. Artemis, Transgressor's Fate, increase base damage, it was on a scale of 25 to 85, now it's going to be on a scale of 35 to 87. Decrease the cooldown, it was on a scale of 18 to 10 seconds, now it's going to be 14 to 10 seconds. Vengeful Assault, increase the movement speed from 20% to 25%. Decrease the cooldown from, it was on a scale of 18 to 14 seconds, now it's going to be on a scale of 16 to 14 seconds. Baba Yaga, Blast Off, decrease the cooldown from 16 seconds to 14 seconds. Home Sweet Home, increase the shield health scaling from 15% to 25%, increase the knockback strength from 330 to 400. Baron Somdi, Hysteria, increase Hysteria applied from basic attacks from 2 to 5. Vivid Gaze, increase Hysteria applied from 10 to 15 per hit. Added power debuff duration for the description, it's going to be 3 seconds at level 1, 5 seconds at level 5. Consigned Spirits, decrease the cooldown, it was on a scale of 15 to 11, now it's going to be on a scale of 13 to 11. Dodgy, 1000 cuts, decrease the cooldown from 13 seconds to 11 seconds. Hachimon, Eagle Eye, increase the aim account, it was 3 for levels 1 and 2, now it's going to be 4 at all ranks. 
decrease the cooldown, it was 12 seconds. Now it's going to be 12 seconds at level 1, 10 seconds at level 5. Decrease the mana cost, it was going to be 50 to 90. Now it's going to be 50 at all ranks. Heavenly Banner, increase physical power scaling from 45 to 55%. Increase the attack speed, it was on a scale of 5% at level 1, 15% at level 5, now it's going to be 10% at level 1, 20% at level 5. Hades, Devour Souls, decrease the cooldown from 11 seconds to 10 seconds. Pillar of Agony, when Pillar of Agony damages an enemy, all of Hades' other abilities have their cooldown reduced by 0.2 seconds. Hebo, Water Cannon, increase base damage, it was on a scale of 60 to 260, now it's going to be on a scale of 80 to 260. Hell, Decay, increase the magical power scaling, it was 50%, now it's going to be 60%. Decrease the mana cost, it was on the scale of 55 to 75, now it's going to be on a scale of 45 to 65. Restoration, decrease the mana cost, it was on a scale of 55 to 75, now it's going to be on a scale of 45 to 65. Repulse, increase magical power scaling from 70% to 75%. Hera, Commanding Presence, increase the magical power scaling on Argus's first and second hit from 30 to 35%. Increase the magical power scaling on Argus's third hit from 40 to 45%. Royal Assault, increase fist damage, it was on a scale of 80 to 280, now it's going to be on a scale of 80 to 300. Jormungandr, increase the basic attack damage from 9.6 to 10.4. Submerge, increase movement speed from 25% to 35%. Kali, in general, increase the base mana from 205 to 225. Nimble Strike, decrease mana cost from 70 to 60. Lash, increase blade damage. It was on a scale of 35 to 75. Now it's going to be on a scale of 37 to 85. The total increased. It was on a scale of 105 to 225. Now it's going to be 111 to 255. Incense, decrease mana cost from 70 to 60. Mulan, in general, increase base health from 480 to 490. Increase base health per level from 82 to 84. Cross Strike. Increase physical power scaling per hit from 30% to 35%. So the total increase is going to be 30% to 90%. Now it's going to be 35% to 105%. Grapple. Now provides 5% protections in addition to movement speed when mastered. Increase grapple protections from it was 20 to 40. Now it's going to be 25 to 45. Odin. Lunge. Decrease the cooldown, it was on a scale of 16 to 12, now it's going to be 15 to 11. Raven Shout, decrease the cooldown, it was on a scale of 16 seconds to 12 seconds, now it's going to be on a scale of 15 to 11 seconds. Gungir's Might, increase physical power scaling throw damage from 50% to 60%. Oleron, Overflowing Divinity, increase magical power scaling from 15% to 25%. Sanctified Field, decrease cooldown, it was 140 seconds to 100 seconds, now it's going to be 120 seconds to 100 seconds. Oleron is now going to gain 40% crowd control reduction in this area. Ratataskers, Nuts are receiving a change to compensate for the removal of boots. So on this tier 1 acorn, the movement speed is going to go from 8% to 2%, then on the tier 2, it's going to go from 10% to 4%, and then on the tier 3, it's going to go from 20% to 6%. Suzano, Typhoon. Suzano can now refire Typhoon while dead. Terra, Crushing Earth. Terra can now refire Crushing Earth while dead. Thor, Warrior's Madness. Increase radius from 30 to 55 units. Anvil of Dawn. Increase the physical power scaling from 90% to 100%. Thoth, Hieroglyphic Assault. Increase magical power scaling from 20% to 25%. Tiamat, Summon Serpents. When serpents damage a phoenix or a titan, they take one pip of health and damage. I assume they mean one tick of health and damage. Summon beasts. Decrease lifetime from 30 seconds to 15 seconds. I think that is a great change. Freya. Irradiate. Decrease mana cost. It was 60 to 80. Now it's going to be 45 to 65. Pulse. Decrease mana cost. It was 60 to 80. Now it's going to be 45 to 65. Nox. Shadow lock. Increase minion damage. It was on a scale of 50 to 190. Now it's going to be on a scale of 50 to 210. Increase minion damage scaling from 40% to 50%. Yemoja, Omi. Yemoja no longer needs to gain mana or MP5 to attain extra Omi. Instead, she gains 1 Omi at level 6, 11, and 16. Mana and MP5 are now converted to health at a rate of 20%. Bouncing Bubble and Moonstrike. There is now a small delay when attempting to spam these abilities back to back. For example, if you use Bouncing Bubble into Moonstrike as fast as possible, there is no delay. If you then attempt to use Bouncing Bubble again as fast as possible, there is a small delay. Bouncing Bubble, increased base damage, it was on a scale of 30 to 170, now it's going to be on a scale of 40 to 180. 
increase the post fire from 0.3 seconds to 0.43 seconds. River's Rebuke, increase the cooldown from 110 seconds to 120 seconds. Up next, we're going to be going over the post PTS balance for the items and gods. For the post PTS balance, first up, we have Staff of Mirrodin, decrease the magical power from 95 to 85, decrease the uncap cooldown reduction provided from 80% to 70%, decrease the time to decay from 7 seconds to 4 seconds, Sundering Spear, increase cooldown from 90 seconds to 110 seconds, decrease the stacking damage increase from 7% to 5%, Sundering Spear upgrade, increase the cooldown from 90 seconds to 110 seconds, Transcendence, increase the cost from 2450 to 2600, so they're reverting it to how it was before the 8-6 buff. Stone Cutting Sword, decrease the cost from 2350 to 2250, decrease the protection debuff from 10 to 7 per stack, decrease the protection buff from 10 to 7 per stack. War Flag and War Banner, updated the description to better reflect how this functions when multiple War Flag and Banners are stacked. So the movement speed without boots, at level 1 we're going to gain 0% movement speed and then each level after that up to level 7 we're going to gain 3% movement speed. Gilgamesh, Winds of Shamash, decrease the initial slow from 20 to 30%, now it's going to be 20% at all ranks. The root at the end of the ultimate no longer cripples. Up next we're going to be going over the skins coming out in the mid-season patch or 8-7. First up we have the 11 Scylla skin which is going to be exclusive to the battle pass. Then we have the Hopper Apollo, which is also going to be the Battle Pass, the Demogorgon Bacasora, the Mind Flayer Sylvanas, Star Court 11 Scylla, Hopper PI, Apollo. I think all these skins look really cool. I like that they have a Stranger's Thing Battle Pass going on. I like that show, especially the first season. The second season didn't quite live up to the first season, but it was still good. The Star Court 11 Scylla and the Hopper PI Apollo are going to be on the second half of the Battle Pass, meaning it's past level 60. Then we have the Hyperspace Loki, which is going to be exclusive to the Court of Midnight event. The Crimson Magus Morgan Le Fay, which is going to be exclusive to the Court of Midnight event. The Knight of Neptune Poseidon, which is going to be exclusive to the Court of Midnight event. I think that the Morgan Le Fay skin and the Poseidon skin are probably the two coolest skins coming out this patch. I really like the style of these skins. Then we have the Sunny Side Up Bacchus, which is going to be exclusive to the Brunch Time chest. We have the Doomsayer Sensei, the Morgan, which is going to be exclusive to the Sensei chest. The Shadow Tech Chernabog, which is going to be Court of the Midnight event. We have the Coral Coast Emoja, which is going to be Court of the Midnight. The Danger Noodle Kuku Khan, which is going to be a summertime chest. We have the Sand Castle Slasher Dodgy, which is going to be a summertime chest. And then we have the Shadow Sparrow Jingwei, which is going to be exclusive for the Shadow chest. Up next, we're going to be going over the Conquest changes. So the Conquest changes. The Ocean's Fury Conquest update has arrived. A raging storm summoned by Tiamat culminates in a massive tidal wave washing over the lands between Olympus and Babylon. The sky is clear, shining a light on the effects this event has had on the map. The storm passed, but the sea outside the map still seems angry. General map changes. Duo Lane has a new side jungle area outside of the lane as the landmark here was washed away by the wave. Dual Lane Alpha Harpies have had their pathing adjusted to split into two Alpha Harpy spawns, one that favors each theme. Solo Lane has a new XP camp area marked by a wrecked ship on the environment. Back Harpy locations on the red buff side have been adjusted to make room for a new camp. The map's lighting has been returned to its 8-1 state. Various sea life, puddles, and damage are scattered across the map. Vine walls have been removed. There is a new objective, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, the Draugr. This aquatic entity has risen from the deep and challenges gods. Slaying it grants your entire team Dragger's Boon. Towers and Phoenixes receive a stacking buff of plus 7% increased power and plus 5% damage mitigation for each allied god within their radius. Maximum stack 3 times in the last 240 seconds. And then right here it lists the base health and the scaling for the new dual lane side jungle area. There is a new jungle buff support which is green. While wearing this, jungle buffs on nearby allied gods will not expire. This effect does not apply to other support buffs. It's also going to grant plus 50 maximum health and mana, plus an additional 30 for every 50 total protections of the wear. When it's enhanced, it's going to grant 10 HP 5 and 10 MP 5. And then we're going over some base health and base stats. 
So for balancing the buffs, the enhanced damage buff increased the lifesteal bonus from plus 7% to plus 10%. The enhanced speed buff increased movement speed bonus from plus 5% to plus 7%. The enhanced mana buff increased maximum mana bonus from plus 10% to plus 15%. Increased maximum mana bonus from plus 10% to plus 15%. Then they adjusted a lot of the camps. Um, I will leave a link in the description down below if you want to see. Everything got a little bit tankier, not too much else. And then we also have the other game modes, so Classic Joust and Duel. Once a Phoenix is slain, all ranged auto attacks will now pass through its pedestal. The Benevolent Starter item and both of its upgrades are now banned in these modes. Arena. This map has complete visual overhaul to match the theme of the update's crossover Stranger Things. The Greco-Roman arena now lays in darkness, covered in otherworldly life as the gods battle through this parallel world known as the Upside Down. The three lowest XP members on each team will now receive one extra bonus XP per second. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and check out the channel for some more content. I will be uploading a lot of Smite content over these next couple of weeks, so make sure you don't miss out on that. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.